good morning students so today we'll start with another topic of dental material that is dental amalgam these are the contents which we are going to discuss one by one so basically starting with the amalgam what is amalgam it is an alloy that contains mercury according to anu service dental amalgam is an alloy of mercury silver copper and tin which may also contain palladium zinc and other material starting with the history part silver paste was used in china in year 1659 trevio introduced amalgam in paris in year 1826 The two Englishmen, the Graucor brothers, bought it into U.S. in year 1833. In 1841, they introduced the term, designated the term amalgam for the silver paste. In 1843, the American Society of Dental Surgeons were in favor to ban the dental amalgam. which leads to the outbreak of first amalgam war during the first amalgam war in 1851 the lindrel wrote it as an excellent means for conservative dentistry in 1859 john toms asked to provide the evidence against the amalgam use In 1870, at the end of the war, and innovations like retentive pins and metric retainers and mattresses. In 1895, Sir G. V. Black gave the formula for the dental amalgam. After that, in 1926, Alfred Stock condemned amalgam due to the mercury toxicity. During amalgam war second in 1930 the commission reviews on the mercury toxicity in 1963 high yield copper disperse alloy by ins and jodilis in 1985 dr hal huggins published a book that promoting the theory of amalgam caused a variety of diseases This is all about the history part. Let's moving on to the basic composition of the amalgam. So the alloy contains a powder and a liquid. In the powder it contains the silver, the tin, copper, zinc, indium, platinum and palladium and in the liquid contains the mercury. Now we will discuss the role of each ingredient one by one starting with the silver So silver is the major element in the reaction which increases the strength and reduces the creep So the term creep what does it mean Creep means it is the time dependent plastic deformation I repeat creep is the time dependent plastic deformation which occurs when a metal is subjected to a constant load near its melting point it is known as creep so silver reduces the creep the silver contributes to the expansion on setting it accelerates the setting time to some extent and it increases the resistance to tarnish moving on to the another ingredient let me tell you some important mcqs which has been already asked in the aims and the aipg examination regarding the silver so the largest component of the amalgam alloy is silver it is the mcq mcq which has been asked in your pj exam previously i repeat the largest component of amalgam alloy is silver as you can see here also that the major element in the reaction is silver 
second is which of the following face provides the maximum strength in hardened mercury or silver alloy so basically silver and the tin these two ingredients it provides the maximum strength in hardening the mercury and the silver alloy i hope these two mcqs are clear to you moving on to the next ingredient that is tin it controls the reaction rate between the silver and the mercury it reduces the setting expansion to optimal values it reduces the hardness it form the it forms the weak gamma 2 phase basically the reaction has three phase the gamma phase the gamma 1 phase and gamma 2 phase which we will going to read at the later stages so tin increases the flow and the setting time the large quantities reduce the large quantity of the tin reduces resistance of amalgam to corrosion same way silver increases the resistance to tarnish and tin reduces the resistance of amalgam to corrosion so moving on to the another ingredient let me tell you some important mcqs regarding the tin so tin is the constituent of the amalgam alloy which reduces the expansion is already being written that tin reduces the setting expansion to the optimal value moving to another ingredient that is copper copper increases the strength and the hardness and also increases the setting expansion the question related the mcqs related to copper are the copper content in the low copper amalgam what is the copper content in the low copper amalgam that is 6% i repeat 6% is the copper content which is present in the low copper amalgam next is by increasing the percentage of copper the strength in the hardness increases it is already being written over here that copper increases the strength and the hardness these are some of the important points which you have to mug up or which you have to keep this in mind because the questions of the mcqs is going to frame from these lines from these important points next important mcq from the copper is penetrating corrosion does not occur in high copper amalgam penetrating corrosion does not occur in high copper amalgam i hope these two three mcqs are clear to you coming on to the zinc zinc it act as quencher and deoxidizer it is very important this word is very important that zinc act as an scavenger and deoxidizer zinc makes the amalgam plastic and zinc also caught causes the delayed expansion if contaminated with moisture during the trituration and condensation the trituration word it means the mixing of alloy and mercury the term triturations mean the mixing of the alloy and the mercury so zinc the main function is it act as a scavenger and it causes the delayed expansion if contaminated with moisturizer as with moisture so the question related to zinc is same way that zinc causes delayed expansion in amalgam is due to hydrogen delayed expansion is caused by hydrogen in zinc in your reaction 
coming on to the mercury mercury it's itself a big topic so in this it is a pre amalgamated alloys so question the mcqs related to mercury are the adequate mixing of mercury is indicated by shiny mix it means the shiny mix tells that the mixing of the mercury is adequate the shiny mix or the shiny surface of the mixture tells the tells that the mixing of the mercury is adequate coming on to the next mcq regarding the mercury is absorption of mercury in human body least occurs from kidney it is very important in commonly asked question in your various competitive exams that the absorption of mercury in the human body occurs least from the kidneys i hope these mcqs are clear to you because it is very these mcqs are very important and already being asked in various competitive neat exams coming on to the platinum it hardens the alloy and increases the resistance to corrosion same way the palladium it hardens and whitens the alloy so mcq related to this is gallium and indium added to the amalgam to replace the mercury so to replace the mercury in the reaction we have to add the gallium and the indium so these all are the ingredient i hope these all ingredients are clear to you starting with the silver the tin the copper zinc mercury platinum palladium etc so coming on to the classification according to classification it contains copper content that is low copper alloy high copper alloy zinc content zinc containing alloy zinc free alloy that is admix alloy in single composition these are two subdivisions of this according to the shape of the powder particles the lathe cut alloy the spherical alloy and the spheroidal alloy so basically this is the classification number 1 i repeat according to copper content low copper alloy high copper alloy according to zinc content zinc containing alloys zinc free alloys according to shape of the powder particle lathe cut alloy spherical alloy and spheroidal alloy based on the number of alloying metals it's binary it's tertiary and quaternary and based on the no noble metal content coming on to the manufacture of the alloy so the manufacturing process the lathe cut alloys in this the silver and the tin they are melted together then allow them to cool and the phase gets solidified and in the heat treatment it is heated to 400 degrees celsius for 8 hours and then grind and then mill to 25 to 50 microns this is the manufacture of the alloy these are about the lathe cut alloys coming on to the spherical alloy they melt the alloys they get melt together they atomize and form the sphere particles which ranges from the size of 5 to 40 microns it is very important the size of the spherical alloy ranges from 5 to 40 microns so these are the particle shape this is lathe cut alloys this is spherical a sphere shape this is a spherical alloy and a spheroidal alloy so comparison of lathe cut and the spherical alloys spherical requires less mercury as their surface area is lesser hence amalgamate readily lathe cut alloy require more mercury because they have their surface area more 
saying this the spheroidal they have the lesser surface area while the lathe cut having the more surface area so the use of the mercury is more so in spherical they have the better resistance to corrosion and lathe cut it corrode more readily because of mercury so in lathe cut uh, in spherical alloys these are superior to 1r and the final compressive strength according to koren and asker in 1967 in your lathe cut it is comparatively inferior 1r and the final compressive strength it is superior your spherical is superior and your lathe cut is inferior please this terminology is very important please keep this in mind this is easier to condense your spherical is easier to condense because the surface area is small and it is your lathe cut are difficult to condense because of the larger surface area as you can see there here it is difficult to condense because of large surface area so in so in spherical ease of condensation causes increased chances of cervical overhangs that is the matrix must be very well wedges wedged if these alloys are to be used in spherical lack that is body tending not to remain in place after condenser is removed contour matrix adequately pre wedging 15 minute may be necessary why because the contents when you the condenser is removed it is not remains in their original place so in the spherical it is easier to carve because of the smaller area and in the lathe cut it is difficult to carve because of the larger surface area same way the uh, your spherical it is easier to polish because of the so less surface area and in the lathe cut they are more difficult to polish in the spherical the adapt less well to the cavity wall but due to the higher surface area due to the increased surface area the lathe cut adapt better to the cavity wall in the spherical particle as the particle are prepared in the inert atmosphere no danger of oxidation easier to manufacture but in the lathe cut it is more difficult to manufacture so indications of spherical and lathe cut alloys indication in the spherical it is used in the large restorations foundations and the pin amalgams the lathe cut alloys are used in the class 1 cavity and the class 2 cavities so these are the comparison this is the comparison of the lathe cut and the spherical alloys now before coming on to the another topic let's discuss some mcqs related to manufacture and the shape of the particle which has been asked previously in your competitive aipg and aims and pj exam so a mixed high copper alloy powder contains 9 to 20% of copper i repeat a mixed high copper alloy powder contains 9 to 20% of copper the setting time of the amalgam is best controlled by trituration so trituration is the best method to control the setting time of the amalgam in the spherical alloy less condensing force is required as compared to lathe cut alloy so in spherical alloy less condensing force is required i have already told you this thing that 
it is uh, your spherical these are easy to condense and it is difficult to condense so basically it is easier to condense then spherical alloys less condensing forces required as compared to lathe cut this question is being asked in your aims exam previously so the percent of percentage of copper in the high copper alloy is 13 to 30 percent it is asked it was asked in your eipg exam next is the single composition amalgam alloy have the maximum strength single composition amalgam alloy have the maximum strength the strength comprises of both your compressive strength and your tensile strength coming on to the mode of supply so it is basically supplied in the form of powder and liquid powder and liquid it is also available in the forms of capsules it is also available in the form of sachet and pallets. Amalgamation it is very important topic. Number of questions are being asked from amalgamation regarding the phases, the gamma, gamma 1, gamma 2 phase. So please try and understand very carefully. Listen very carefully. This is very important reaction. So conventional amalgams, first we are talking about conventional amalgams. When your silver and tin reacts with the mercury, it is known as gamma phase. Your silver and tin is known as gamma phase. When the gamma phase reacts with the mercury, it leads to the form, it leads to silver mercury that is gamma 1 phase tin mercury that is gamma 2 phase and again this one your silver and tin which is unreacted again the gamma phase I repeat the gamma phase is your silver and tin phase is known as gamma phase gamma 1 phase is silver and mercury phase gamma 2 phase is tin and mercury phase when silver and tin reacts with the mercury it leads to the formation of silver mercury and tin and mercury which is known as gamma 1 phase gamma 2 phase plus it also give rise to silver and tin which is unreacted so this slide is very important for your exam point of views because number of question generates in from this topic of amalgamation is only from this slide so gamma phase it is the strongest phase that is silver tin is gamma phase it is the most strongest phase gamma one phase that is silver and mercury it is the noblest phase gamma two phase that is tin and mercury it is the least stable phase or you can say the weakest phase mercury phase is the weakest phase trace element phase the copper or the zinc might be present at as separate phases or alloyed so it is the reaction between the silver and the mercury so basically these are the alloy of the silver and this is the mercury when they react to each other see this is your alloy your silver and tin alloy this is your alloy silver and tin it reacts with the mercury same way your silver and tin alloy when reacts with the mercury this is the mercury which reacts with the mercury it forms the residual alloy the mercury reaction produces so it is the gamma 1 phase this these small particles can you see this these are the gamma 1 phase and this is the alloy the residual alloy okay same way these are gamma 2 phase these are gamma 1 phase these are gamma 1 phase and these are gamma 
two face it is very clear this picture completes the reaction it is silver tin alloy that you can say the residual alloy these are the mercury reaction or you can say the gamma one phase and these are gamma two phase can you see this the black one dark black one these are gamma two phase this is gamma one phase and this is your residual alloy i hope it is clear it is very important same way amalgamation of admixed alloy these are the amalgamation of conventional amalgams these are the amalgamation of admixed alloy same with the gamma phase your silver and tin when reacts with the silver and copper plus your mercury it leads to the formation of gamma 1 phase gamma 2 phase and gamma phase tin and mercury when the tin and the mercury reacts with your silver and copper it forms copper tin and silver and mercury gamma and gamma gamma one phase so basically these are this is the amalgamation of the uni composition alloy see what we have read is amalgamation of conventional amalgams amalgamation of admixed alloys amalgamation of uni composition alloys each particle of alloy powder has the same chemical composition as you all know so this this is the same reaction your in the first reaction your silver and tin reacts with the mercury in your second reaction silver and tin Uh, silver tin silver copper reacts with the mercury and the third stage silver tin copper reacts complete reacts with the mercury and leads to gamma gamma one phase gamma in elastic so some important question i have regarding amalgamation is the mcqs which has been asked previously which of the following faces of dental amalgam has the minimum strength as you all know minimum strength is gamma two phase strongest phase gamma one phase so it is already been asked in your aims and aipg exam differently that which is which one is the strongest phase so your answer will be gamma phase which one is the least stable phase or the minimum phase your answer will be gamma 2 phase so gamma 2 phase is eliminated in the high copper amalgam why gamma 2 phase is eliminated in the high copper amalgam because it is the least stable or you can see the weakest phase so the next mcq is the solid solution of silver plus mercury is known as gamma 1 phase as you all know the solid solution of silver and mercury is known as gamma 1 phase the solution of tin and mercury gamma 2 phase and and your silver and tin it's your gamma 1 phase gamma phase so moving on to the factors governing the quality of the dental amalgam so what all are the factors that controlled by the dentist the selection of the alloy the mercury alloy ratio the trituration procedure condensation technique marginal integrity anatomic characteristics and the final finish so what are all are the factors that are controlled by the manufacturer composition of the alloy heat treatment of the alloy size shape method of production of the alloy particles surface treatment of the alloy particles the form in which the alloy is supplied so these are the factors that should be controlled by the manufacturer these are the factor that can be controlled by the dentist coming on to the very important topic that is properties of amalgam it is a very important topic so it should be dimensional change it has the dimensional change 
the strength, the corrosion and the creep. Coming on to the dimensional change, first we are going to discuss with the dimensional change. According to AD specification number 1, these are very important specification according to ED specification number so and so according to this it is very important for your exam point of view so according to ED specification number one the amalgam should not either contract or expand more than 20 mu per centimeter at 37 degrees Celsius So it contains of three stages that is stage one it is the initial in which the initial contraction for 20 minutes followed by stage two that is expansion and stage three that is delayed expansion. I repeat in stage one the initial contraction for 20 minutes followed by the expansion which caused and in the third stage it causes the delayed expansion theory of dimensional change most modern amalgams exhibits a net contraction classical picture this, I'll show you the graph the specimen undergoes initial contraction for about 20 minutes after the beginning of trituration and then begins to expand in the graph in the first 20 minutes see in the first 20 minutes it is expanding it is contracting but after 20 min minutes it expands and increases can you see this? This is dimensional change. Same way, I have told you that initial contraction for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, the beginning of trituration, the trituration phase begins and it begins to expand. Alloy plus mercury particles dissolve gamma 1 phase, gross final volume of gamma 1 phase is less than the sum of the initial volumes of the dissolved silver and mercury that are used to produce the gamma 1 phase. Hence, contraction continues as long as the growth of gamma 1 phase continues. So the graph, the content, the graph will expand, the dimension change will expand as long as the growth of the gamma phase is continuous in the reaction. So in sufficient mercury, if oh sorry, if sufficient mercury is present in the mix, expansion will occur when gamma one crystal impinge. Otherwise, contraction is seen. I repeat, it is a very important line. If sufficient mercury is present in the mix, expansion will occur when gamma 1 crystals impinge. Otherwise, if there is an absence of gamma 1 phase, your contraction will be seen. Therefore, manipulation procedures like low mercury is, is to alloy ratios, higher condensation pressures, procedures that accelerate the setting time, longer trituration time, small you can use the smaller particle size and which favors the contraction modern amalgams shows net contraction older amalgams showed net expansion reason older amalgams contains larger alloy particles that's why they showed the expansion more expansion than contraction and they has the high mercury is to alloy ratio. Hand trituration is used earlier as compared to high speed amalgamator. So nowadays or today's amalgam there is a net contraction in the graph. 
in the older amalgam in the older days in the older amalgam there was a net expansion why because the older amalgam contains the large alloy particles and has the higher mercury and alloy ratio they use and hand trituration of the amalgam is used as compared to amalgamators coming on to the factors affecting the dimensional stability particle size and the shape mercury alloy ratio setting reaction rate and consumption trituration condensation technique and the pressure applied moisture contamination coming on to the zinc content moisture contamination if the zinc containing low or the high copper amalgam is contaminated with moisture during trituration or condensation a large expansion that is the delayed expansion as shown in the graph can be seen okay so in zinc previously when i was discuss the ingredient of the alloy zinc i told you that these three points are very important that zinc it acts as a scavenger it makes the amalgam plastic and most important it causes delayed expansion if contaminated with moisture during trituration or condensation same we are reading this point here if the zinc containing low or the high copper amalgam is contaminated with moisture during trituration or condition a large expansion as shown in the graph can be seen see delayed expansion graph when there is a delayed expansion a large graph a large line of the dimensional change you can see here this expansion see this is very important zinc is very important in the amalgam it is a very important part of the amalgam because a number of question arises from this a small part of the zinc topic so this expansion usually starts after 3 to 5 days and may continue for months reaching values greater than 400 millimeter micrometer so delayed expansion and secondary expansion you can call the both that it is delayed expansion and the secondary expansion so it is the reaction when the zinc reacts with water when the zinc reacts with the water it leads to zinc oxide and hydro release of hydrogen i have told you earlier also that there was a question on mcqs which has been asked in your aims exam regarding the zinc is the cause was this causes of expansion in the zinc containing amalgam is hydrogen this is your answer that the causes of expansion in the zinc containing alloy is due to this your hydrogen so the hydrogen causes the delayed expansion so the hydrogen formed collect in the restoration increase the internal pressure leads to creep and the expansion i hope this slide this topic is clear to you all the contamination of amalgam with the moisture can occur during the following procedure we have already studied that it is during the trituration and during the condensation skin secretions touching skin containing amalgam with bare hands improper or poor isolation during operative procedures excessive expansion excessive expansion now coming on to the next factor that is creep 
so i have already told you that what is creep creep it is defined as the time dependent plastic deformation there are two types of creep that is static creep and dynamic creep i'm telling you right here only that a question in your aims has already came from this part from your this one your dynamic creep and the question was dynamic creep is the deformation of the set amalgam during the function so what is dynamic creep it is the deformation of the set amalgam during the function so there are two types of creep the static creep and the dynamic creep it occurs at a specific temperature strength of the amalgam is inversely proportional it is not directly proportional mind it the strength of the amalgam is inversely proportional creep rate has been found to correlate with the marginal breakdown of the traditional low copper amalgam that is higher the creep greater is the degree of margin deterioration i repeat this is very important line that higher the creep greater the degree of marginal deterioration so influence of microstructure on creep creep rates increase with the higher gamma 1 volume fractions and decrease with the gamma 1 grain size very important that creep rate increases with the high gamma 1 the main terminology is volume fractions and it decreases with the larger gamma grain size it decreases with the grain size it increases with the volume fraction the presence of gamma 2 is associated with higher creep rates very low creep rate in single composition high copper amalgam may be associated with l rods which act as barriers to deform to deformation to the gamma 1 phase high residual mercury content also increases creep important line so it is a four year old amalgam restoration you can see in the one amalgam placed with the alloy has the minimal dynamic creep dynamic creep i have told you it is a deformation of the deformation of the set amalgam and in the b you can see the second image the amalgam restoration has the highest creep can you see this is the highest deformation of the set amalgam so before coming on to the next topic that is tarnish and corrosion let me tell you some important mcqs which has been asked in your competitive exams so creep as i have already told you that it is the time dependent plastic deformation the question came in your aims as well as in your pgr exam was as i was told you that dynamic creep is the deformation of the set amalgam next question next mcq is high copper amalgam alloy is least susceptible to creep this is your pgr question low copper amalgam alloy has the highest creep value so it is vice versa these are two different question please keep this in mind your high copper amalgam alloy is least susceptible to creep while your low copper amalgam alloy has the highest creep value these are the two questions simultaneously asked one is from pgi exam one in your AIPG exam so these two are very important vice versa and interrelated also so coming on to the next topic your next factor that is tarnish and corrosion so you all know what is tarnish what is corrosion so 
Tarnish it is a procedure by which a metal surface is dulled in the brightness and discolored through the formation of a chemical film such as sulfide or an oxide. Tarnish denotes according to Linfelder 1983 Tarnish denotes a surface deposit with the no underlying degradation. This may occasionally involve the formation of a passive layer which may protect the restoration from corrosion. So basically tarnish it forms or it involves the formation of a passive layer which further protects that restoration from corrosion. Coming on to the corrosion, it is a chemical or an electrochemical process through which a metal is attacked by the natural agents like air and water resulting in partial or complete dissolution, deterioration or weakening of any solid substance. I hope it is clear. Degree of tarnish and discoloration appear to be dependent upon the individual's oral environment, the alloy employed in the restoration. So the active corrosion of a newly placed restoration occurs at the interface between the tooth and the restoration, which leads to the micro leakage of the electrolyte and leads to crevice corrosion and results in the corrosion products that seal the space. Amalgam a self-sealing restoration. This is very important. Take some time. Read this point. It is very important. You can understand it properly. Now repeat. Active corrosion of a newly placed restoration occurs at the interface between the tooth and the restoration which leads to the micro leakage of the electrolyte leads to the crevice corrosion that results the corrosion product seals the space and leads to amalgam as a self-sealing restoration as you all know it's a self amalgam is a self-sealing restoration most common corrosion products found with the traditional copper amalgam alloys are oxides and chlorides of tin. These are found at the tooth amalgam interface and penetrating the bulk of old restoration. Along the margin of restoration, they seal the space against micro leakage. So corrosion products containing copper seen in the high copper amalgam very which leads to very minimal as the end phase is less susceptible to corrosion than is the gamma 2 phase. Gamma 1 phase crystals are small and equiaxed. Gamma 2 crystals, gamma 2 phase crystals are long, blade-like, penetrating through the matrix because of the inner crystalline contacts between the blades most corrosion prone phase that leads to corrosion begins from the outside of the amalgam along the crystals that connecting to a new crystals at inner crystalline contacts which penetrating the corrosion which is porous spongy amalgam with the minimal mechanical resistance There are two key factors to this degradation process. Number one is the corrosion prone character of silver and mercury phase. Factor number two connecting the path formed by the blade like geometry of the crystal. Both these are eliminated by the use of more copper. So copper and tin phase it is corrosion prone it is prone to corrosion which penetrating corrosion does not occur and individual crystals are when the individual crystals are not connected so basically copper is the only ingredient which provide resistance to tarnish and corrosion it is very important that the 
copper provides the resistance to tarnish and corrosion so corrosion there are various types of corrosion coming on to chemical corrosion electrochemical corrosion galvanic corrosion electrochemical cell corrosion crevice corrosion and stress corrosion both low and high copper amalgams undergoes two types of corrosion that is number one is chemical corrosion this are mostly occurs on the occlusal surface which leads to the blackish discoloration silver sulfide film is formed it does not comprise any property except aesthetics second is the electrochemical corrosion it occurs whenever chemically different sites act as an anode and one is occur as cathode it involves the two sites for example if you have two restoration two different restoration one in the upper arch and another is in the lower arch but of two different metals it is known as electrochemical corrosion so same way occurs whenever chemically different sites act as anode and cathode requires to be connected by the electrical circuit in the presence of an electrolyte typically the saliva is your electrolyte and node corrodes forming soluble and insoluble products okay i'm telling right here that a question has come from this particular corrosion i am reading the question so a patient it is your this question came in your aipt exam that a patient i'm reading the complete mcq a patient who has a recent amalgam filling in the upper teeth i repeat a patient has a recent amalgam filling in the upper teeth and has a gold filling in the lower teeth the patient complains of pain the reason for this can be the reason for this can be galvanism complete this one so this is the answer the question which has which i had already read this is the answer of the question the placement of gold restoration adjacent to amalgam different in emf Dif different in your electromagnetic field leads to corrosion with the free mercury when the free mercury is liberated it leads to the weakening of the gold restoration which is associated with the microscopically different electrode site so the, so the same process may occur microscopically local galvanic corrosion or the structure selective corrosion the question which i have told you it is the answer is galvanic corrosion because the the patient has already two different restoration one is in the upper arch second is in the lower arch so there is a difference in the electromagnetic field which leads to the galvanic corrosion so high copper amalgam is cathodic with respect to conventional amalgam hence placement of high copper amalgam restorations adjacent to traditional amalgam restoration in a patient leads to the acceleration of corrosion in the traditional amalgam re restoration it is a laboratory finding so the portion of amalgam covered with the plaque or the soft tissue which leads which results locally lower the oxygen and the hydrogen ion concentration and leads to anodic behavior results in the corrosion and local electrochemical cell you can observe the cracks and the crevices 
which leads to the concentration of the cell corrosion or known as crevice corrosion. Stress area in amalgam restoration is known as stress corrosion. See the cracks, you can see the cracks and the crevices. It is known as concentration cell corrosion or the crevice corrosion. The stress areas in amalgam restoration is known as stress corrosion. Okay, before moving to the amalgam properties, I have one or two MCQs related to your tarnish and corrosion. The disc for number one MCQ is the discoloration of the. Please listen carefully. Discoloration of silver uh, silver alloy is due to. I repeat, discoloration of silver alloy is due to. Answer is the tarnish and corrosion. Second MCQ, the tarnished layer of silver amalgam consists of. The tarnished layer of silver amalgam consists of. The answer is sulfides of silver. These both MCQs were asked in your AIPG exam. So moving on to the strength amalgam properties. First is strength. So compressive strength, percentage of creep, tensile strength within 24 hours in megapascals. So compressive strength in one hour and in seven days. Low copper alloys having 145. Compressive strength within one hour and 343 megapascal within seven days. It creates 2% of creep and 60 megapascal within 24 hour of the tensile strength admixture leads to 137 megapascal of compressive strength in one hour 431 megapascal of compressive strength in seven days which leads to four percent of creep and 48 megapascal of tensile strength in 24 hours Coming on to the single composition, it leads to 262 megapascal of compressive strength in one hour and 510 megapascal of compressive strength in seven days and 0.13% of creep and 64 megapascal of tensile strength in 24 hours. Coming on to the strength of amalgam. Amalgams have a good compressive strength as I've already told you that amalgam have the good compressive strength but weak tensile or the bending stresses. So trituration, the factors are the trituration, the condensation, your mercury content, porosity, particle size and shape. Coming on to one by one effect of trituration as I've already told you it is the mixture of your alloy and the mercury it is known as trituration the effect of trituration depends upon the type of amalgam alloy trituration time speed of amalgamator hand trituration or mechanical amalgamator under trituration and over trituration both decreases the strength of traditional plus high copper amalgam it is very important I have some MCQs regarding that trituration so first MCQ is during amalgamation trituration is done to coat the alloy particle with mercury it has been asked in your AIMS exam that during amalgamation the trituration is done to coat the alloy particle and the mercury. Second MCQ is well pre-measured capsules of amalgam can release mercury vapor during your answer will be condensation. I repeat well pre-measured capsules of amalgam can release mercury vapor during your answer will be condensation. Third it is already being asked in your AIPG exam. Third MCQ is cause of expansion in zinc containing 
amalgam is hydrogen as I've already told you over trituration of silver alloys and mercury it increased it's very important it's been asked in your AIPG exam that over trituration of silver alloy and mercury it increases the strength of lathe cut alloy but decreases the strength of spherical alloy see under trituration and over trituration both decreases the strength of traditional and high copper amalgam but my question is over trituration of silver alloy and mercury increases the strength of lathe cut alloy while decreases the strength of spherical alloy I hope it is clear these MCQs are very important I hope it is clear to you Coming on to the effect of mercury content. So sufficient mercury to be mixed to coat each particle to allow through amalgamation. Less than adequate quantity of mercury leads to dry and granular mix which results in the rough pitted surface and finally leads to corrosion. I repeat, less than adequate quantity of mercury leads to dry and granular mix which results in the rough and pitted surface and finally lead to corrosion. Excess mercury 45 to 55 percent results in the mark reduction in the strength. So very important. Effect of condensation. Condensation pressure, condensation techniques, alloy particle shape. Higher the condensation pressure, greater is the compressive strength, especially the 1R strength. I repeat, higher the condensation pressure, greater res results in the greater compressive strength, especially the within the 1R strength. Next is effect of porosity. Voids and porosity can remarkably reduce the strength of hardened amalgam. Porosity is related to the following factor that is the plasticity of mix, under trituration, delayed condensation. Coming on to the first property that is plasticity of mix, it decreases over the time from the end of trituration and condensation. It also decreases with under trituration. Effects of amalgam hardening ratio. Amalgams do not gain strength as rapidly as might be desired. According to AD specification, it stipulates a minimum compressive strength of 80 megapascal at the end of one hour. So you need 80 megapascal of the compressive strength at the end of 1 hour according to ADS specification. The 1 hour compressive strength of the high copper single composition amalgam is exceptionally high that is it is the advantage that in the 1 hour compressive strength of the high copper single composition amalgam is exceptionally high. The tensile and the compressive strength may be greatly reduced by improper handling of the material, excess residual mercury, porosity and the moisture contamination. Coming on to the mercuroscopic expansion, mercury from the silver mercury re-reacts with the silver and the tin particles and produces further expansion during the new reaction. This mechanism is called, called mercuroscopic expansion. It is proposed by Jobrinson. Coming on to the selection of alloy. Lathe cut low copper alloys are no longer used. Admixed high copper alloys are preferable nowadays. Zinc containing alloys are very popular. Coming on to the mercury, 
bright mirror like surface according to ad specification number 6 triple distilled and shiny leaving no residue on pouring proportions ms technique this is the alloy and the mercury ratio is 1 is to 1 it is the proportioning Dispensing and trituration. Coming on to the dispensing and trituration. Your one MCQ is being asked in your previous examination. That is image technique. Image technique is otherwise known as no squeeze cloth technique. This question is being asked in your AIPG exam that image technique is otherwise known as no squeeze cloth technique. Disp coming on to the dispensing and trituration. Traditionally, the powder and the mercury crude mixing using the excess mercury alloy. Trituration is by using of mortar and pestle modern these are traditional old times and these are nowadays we are using pallets the capsules the pre-portion amalgam trituration is being done with the help of amalgamators previously the trituration is being done with the help of motor and pestle see it is the capsule and the pestle it is the pre Capsulated amalgam. The mercury is present, it is the septum, and it is the amalgam alloy. Trituration, hand mixing or mechanical mixing. It is the normal mix, it is the over trituration. You can see the shiny surface, and it is the under trituration. You can see the granular, the coarse, or you can see the granular mix. They both decrease the strength. Over trituration and under trituration, they both decrease the strength of the material. Now coming on to the mulling. The mix is enveloped in a dry piece of a rubber dam and is vigorously rubbed. After trituration, the mix is triturated in the pestle-free capsule. It is known as mulling. You know it is the condensation you have to condense the material into the cavity with the help of condenser carving as you all know by creating the perfect anatomy of the tooth it is the finishing okay now one important question which is being asked in your both in your aims and in your pigeon exams in different tiers is the finishing and the polishing of amalgam makes the restoration resistance to tarnish and corrosion so basically the function of the finishing and polishing of your restoration is to provide resistance to tarnish and corrosion it is an important question it is being asked twice in different exams the polishing now coming on to the mercury toxicity it is very important it is itself a, you know topic which is very important so mercury toxicity it is also known as mercury allergy the chronic exposure see it is the level of mercury the, it ranges from 4 to 25 to 100 to 500 to 1000 ranges from 4 to 1000 so it is known as from 4 to 25 it is the upper limit of the urinary mercury attributed to extensive amalgam fillings it has no effect on the health but from the 25 to 100 of your limit it decreases the response on the test for the nerve conduction 
ब्रेन वेव एक्टिविटी एंड द वर्बल स्किल्स सो सप्टल चेंजेस ऑफ सम टेस्ट बट नो ओवर सिम्टम सी इट हैज सिम्टम्स ऑन द सम टेस्ट बट इट डज नॉट हैव एनी सिम्टम्स ऑन द बॉडी रेंज इज फ्रॉम हंड्रेड टू फाइव हंड्रेड इट इज द माइल्ड टू मॉडरेट माइल्ड टू मॉडरेट सिम्टम्स वॉर आर दर आर द सिम्टम्स इट इंक्लूड्स इरिटेबिलिटी डिप्रेशन मेमरी लॉस माइनर ट्रेमर एंड अदर नर्वस सिस्टम डिस्टर्बेंसेज अर्ली साइंस ऑफ डिस्टर्ब किडनी फंक्शन वेन इट रेंजेस फ्रॉम फाइव हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड the symptoms are pronounced which leads to kidney inflammation swollen gums pronounced tremors and nervous system disturbances this diagram is very important any question can be framed from these three mercury levels and their symptoms any question can be framed so what all are the sources of mercury exposure related to the amalgam in the dental office starting with the one which is pre capsulated amalgam storage the storage of the amalgam in the closet amalgam amalgamator aerosols the fumes or you can say the amalgamator aerosols the scrap on the table top it is the table top it's the bracket table the scrap on the bracket table the amalgam removal and the replacement the removal and the replacement of amalgam in the patient's mouth it causes the exposure of the amalgam amalgam scrap container amalgam waste or the cotton rolls which have which are usually replaced in the dust bins it also causes the exposure next is your uh, amalgam and the mercury in plumbing traps when you wash your hands when you wash whatever you motor presser whatever you are washing it is trapped in the plumbing pipes you can say so next is your amalgam scrap i have told you next is mercury trapped in the tiles in the tiles and the carpeting if you have the carpets in your clinics or if you have placed the tiles in the, on the floor so the mercury get trapped on in the tiles and the carpeting so it is very important so what are the sources of mercury amalgam 1 to 3 mu and mu gram of mu gram or micro gram per day air 0.12 0.4 of inorganic mercury 0.3 of organic mercury water 0.0.05 food 20 per day what all are the test the blood urine and hair urine is the best long term indicator of total metallic mercury normalized to grams of creatinine clearance from the kidney 1 microgram is the lowest threshold of the mercury vapor in the air of 15 mg of mer- mercury in urine so i have two to three mcqs which has been asked in your previous examination regarding the mercury toxicity number 1 is chronic mercury toxicity results from your answer is ingestion while removing old restoration skin contact and the mercury vapors i repeat chronic mercury toxicity results from ingestion while removing old restorations skin contact and mercury vapor second mcq is mercury intoxication in dental office is is mainly due to inhalation of mercury vapors it has been asked in the pj exam number third mcq is mercury is toxic because it binds to sulfur hydryl groups these are important mcqs 
Coming on to the safety precautions in your workplace, storage, dispensing, amalgamators, your mercury vapor, finishing, instrument sterilization, mercury spills, skin contact, mercury level monitoring. Substitute suggested for amalgam due to mercury toxicity. Consolidated silver alloyance system developed at the National Institute of the Standard and Technology. Drawback alloy strain hardens. Second is the gallium alloys. Gallium alloys first used in 1928 by Put Grammer. It is introduced in the industry in 1950s. Galloy received FDA approval and ADA seal of acceptance in 1995. In 1996, NIOM approved it for the conservative posterior restoration. In 1998, seal of acceptance was withdrawn. So what are all are the properties? The melting point is 24. 0.78 degrees Celsius boiling point is 18.19.8.19.83 degrees Celsius strength is comparable to amalgam creep comparable to amalgam setting sets early as compared to amalgam and tarnish badly corrosion the potential three times greater than amalgam Dimensionally stable setting expansion causes delayed expansion. Drawbacks of gallium alloy surface roughness, marginal discoloration leads to fracture, setting expansion, difficult manipulation, not economical. It is the early composition, it is the modern composition. Silver 6 to 80 percent, tin 5 to 38 percent, copper 3 to 30 percent, palladium 1 to 40 percent, zinc 1 to 12 percent. In modern composition, alloy is silver contains 60 percent, tin 25 percent, copper 13 percent, palladium 20 percent. In liquid, gallium 47 to 83 percent, aditium 7 to 38 percent. 10, 3 to 30 percent. Same way, gallium in modern composition, gallium 62 percent, iridium 25 percent, 10, 25 percent. Now, coming on to the bonded amalgams definition amalgam restorations which adhere to the underlying tooth structure through a resin mediated attachment. These are known as bonded amalgams. Advantages Conservative cavity preparation reinforces maintaining tooth structure, minimizes micro leakage, less time consuming and cost effective. Coming on to the disadvantages, it is technique sensitive, hydrolytic stable of the bond is questionable, increases cost of amalgam restoration. Steps does not require traditional form of cavity preparations, but parallel walls, grooves and box forms are required in the cavity. High copper unicomposition alloys are used, bonding systems are applied, freshly mixed amalgam is condensed while the resin is still wet. Bonding system, early method, zinc phosphate cement, Later, we use polycarboxylate cement plus amalgam. Latest 4 meta resin system, this GMA phosphonated ester and dentine bonding agents. Parkel introduced 4 meta amalgam bonding system in 1989 in US. Penavia resin. This GMA based resin cements, then MDP in the formulation contributes to the adhesive properties. Types of Panavia X and Panavia 21. It is in the powder and the liquid form and Panavia 21 in paste form, paste system. 
Both the systems are anaerobic in nature. Penavir plus GIC are more effective than Penavir alone. Bonding interface Tooth resin bonding in amalgam is equal to the tooth resin bond in any composite. Amalgam resin bond Alloy is condensed against adhesive resin to surround the amalgam particles and lock it into both alloy and the resin set. It interacts with the metallic ion in amalgam to provide the chemical adhesion. So this is all about the amalgam, the dental amalgam. I hope it is clear. You just go once through it. So apart from this, I will be discussing the MCQs regarding the amalgam. So first MCQ is common between amalgam and ceramic. The compressive strength decreases and the tensile strength. So common the in both amalgam and ceramic, both compressive strength and the tensile strength decreases. The highest mercury concentration in amalgam filling is found at the margin of restoration. So basically at the margin of the restoration, you can found the highest mercury concentration in amalgam filling. In dental amalgam, the dental amalgam is most resistant to compressive stress. According to AD specification number 1, composition of amalgam alloy recommends 65% of the silver, 29% of tin and 5-6% to 6 of copper. The function of copper is to reduce the tarnish and corrosion. According to ADA specification number 1, the minimum compressive strength for silver amalgam filling after 1 hour should be 80 MPa. Which of the following phases of the dental amalgam has minimum strength? It is gamma 2. Gamma 2 phase has the minimum strength. Gamma phase is the strongest phase. I have already told you. Admixed high copper alloy powder contains 9 to 20% of copper. Compared to conventional amalgam, spherical amalgam does not have longer setting time, does not require heavy compaction force, does not require more mercury. So the answer is none of these. In iron zinc containing dental amalgam alloy the percentage of zinc present is less than 0.01 percent which of the following constituent of amalgam decreases the expansion the answer is 10 i have already told you explained you in the fourth or i guess in the fifth slide Copper content in the low copper amalgam is 6%. Absorption of mercury in the human body occurs least from kidneys. The tarnished layer of silver amalgam consists of sulfides of silver. I have already told you. Which of the following is not true about the high copper amalgam alloys? that it has low tensile strength and low compressive strength. The threshold limit value of mercury exposure is 0.05 mg per meter. So amalgam means amalgam means an alloy of two or more metals one of which is mercury. In amalgam alloy which act as oxygen scavenger, undoubtedly zinc, it acts as an oxygen scavenger, it also causes delayed reaction. I have already told you when your zinc gets 
react with your water the reaction takes place it forms the zinc oxide and formation of hydrogen which is the main causative agent for the delayed expansion so the tensile strength of the dental amalgam is 27 to 55 megapascals advantages advantage of minimum mercury technique or ms technique is all except greater plasticity and adapts well to the cavity walls next is which of the following are the most commonly occurring defect in the amalgam it is the marginal defects the solid solution of the silver and the mercury is called gamma 1 mercury is toxic because it binds to sulfur hydryl group i have already told you this so this is all about dental material go through it once i hope it is clear to you thank you so much